Hello, everybody. I'm just trying to get you all to be able to talk. Not sure that's a good thing, but. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Yvonne, for some reason, I can't get you to talk. Sorry. I'm not well sure what that is. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Karen. It's Tooks. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. At least I can see everybody now. It's really strange when you're just sitting here and going, where is everybody? I'm sure there are more people in the house. <laughs> <laughs> we've got seven so far. I think we've got 35 signed up. So, um, but I don't know how many will be on the call and how many are going to watch it recorded. But the less people who are on the call, the more there is opportunity for you to ask questions. Absolutely. OK, so hopefully you can all speak if you wish. Um, obviously, once we get started, if you can all mute. Good morning, Karen. Hi, how are you, Prince? I'm very good. Long time no speak. Absolutely. How's how's life treating you? I'm oh, hanging in there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of it about. There's a lot of people who are doing amazingly well, and there's a lot of people who are pushing against all the challenges that we've been thrown, yeah. such as distribution and logistics. Other. Logistics. I think it is mostly logistics, actually. Well, I don't know. It depends. You're not really in the if you're in the meat business, there's a bit of a shortage of meat at the moment as well. So um, and I've got a couple of people uh, in that position. But other than that, all is good. Um, we'll just let people, a couple more people come on. Um, and in fact, I just remembered I need my notes from yesterday. Did anyone go to the bread and jam um, Monday motivation yesterday? No. no. Yeah. That's good because <laughs> anything I tell you will be news. <laughs> um, Hi, Karen. Once I find the right piece of paper with it on, anyway. Um, Thank okay. you. Say again. Ah, I've gone. Oh, no, I saw you went to get a cup of coffee. That's all right. No worries. <laughs> You're so loud. <laughs> I think I baked a cake at the last webinar I went to. <laughs> Which offers was listening. Yesterday I was having my lunch at the Bread and Jam one. So um, that's the great thing about having webinars. You can just kind of get on with stuff. Um, let's bring a few more people on as you're coming on. Hi, Adam. Hi. You all right? I'm all right. How are you? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. You sound tired. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, you know. There's a lot going on in your life right now. Yeah, exactly. Now we are waiting to, uh, some deliveries to come so we can just produce some more peanut butters and stuff. Yay. So everybody who's on this call, Adam's uh, raising on cedars at the moment. Heart and soul peanut butter. Little plug for you. Um, can I buy? What can you buy? You can buy it online. <laughs> I'm a peanut butter <laughs> addict. Oh, well, you should definitely try it, Adams. It's amazing. Okay, um, that's it. Got a new customer this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can put in the chat your details and feel free to introduce yourselves. Um, I'm just going to bring up the chat. Um, so if you just put in if you message everyone in the drop down, if you want to say who you are and if you want to link in with people, you know, anyone who's worked with me in the past knows LinkedIn is my favorite thing. Um, so if you want to link in with people, great. Um, let's just see anybody on. Oh, and hello, Nadia's in. Jess is in. Raphael's in. Oh my goodness, everybody's coming on now. Excellent. Wow. Hi, Phil. How's it going? Well, from what you were telling me, which is good. Hi, right, Darren. Sorry, darling, it's my phone here. I'm tapping furiously away in the wrong chat box. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I hope you're not multitasking to doing two webinars at once. <laughs> no, no, no. Just just dropping the kids off at school and then sitting in my car answering emails and calls. So, uh, but glad to be here. Excellent. Okay, super job. Right. I am going to get started because um, we have a lot to get through. So if I just share my screen. Um, now, there are a lot of you today. Um, so um, I will try and answer questions as we go. If it starts to get too bogged down, I'm going to put them to the end. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. I will keep the chat in the top box, but it's just me. So um, juggling everything will be a bit of a challenge. Um, play from start. Okay, so I can see the chat. Let's put the chat down in the right hand side. That's good. Um, and then, yeah, okay, as let's get started. So, as I said, everyone who wants anyone who wants to ask questions, please do. Um, and if I go too fast, go just just shout up. So let's get started. Um, just to make sure you're all here for the right thing. We are going to talk today about the application for um, Bread and Jam. And that's going to be the focus. I think I know most of you here, but just in case, somebody actually asked me the other day um, what I actually did. And I'd been talking to for quite a while, so I thought I'll just recap. Um, my kind of numbers, as it were, I was a buyer for seven years at Tesco's and then latterly at Boots. I had a bit of a career at Boots for about 14 years, um, which sort of came when I left. I was I was national account manager working with Safeway. So um, that's that was my first um, transition across the table, as it were. I've been commercial director um, for a number of different food businesses um, from sushi to um Ah, uh, turkeys to Christmas puddings, all sorts of different things. And then um, I've been running Food Mentor. It'll be five years next month, which is pretty exciting. Um, between doing retained work and also obviously coaching and mentoring, we've got listings pretty much in all the majors, Sainsbury's, Budgeons, Morrison's, Ocado, Selfridges, and the list goes on, which is really great. Um the purpose of today is to just take you through um, applying for the pitches. Um, I've been doing this for, gosh, how many years? Certainly two, the last two years, maybe three, actually. Um, and we've had some, some great successes Um and those of you who, who read my emails will be aware of the work that I've done with Dee. Um, Dee and I presented at Bread and Jam in 2018 and finally and, and spoke to Costco and finally listed, oh sorry, launched this year. Um, so that gives you an idea of how long it might take um, to get your listing, but they're not all as long as that. But uh, just to, to give you a sort of heads up. Um, what I'm going to go through today very quickly, are you retailer ready? So let's have a very quick think about is should you be doing it now? And that's, I know I've had a couple of people in the last week said, you know, should we do it now? Is it too soon? My personal view is it's never too soon, um, but we'll we'll get into a bit more detail um, about that. Then we'll get into the, the the wodge of it in terms of making the application. And then I want to talk to you about um, some marketing as well to just think through how can um, how can you increase your chances it's not just about the application um so these are five points i think i i've i've just done a, another webinar where i had seven i've kind of got them down to five now are you retailer ready and it does depend and we're going to have a quick whiz through and have a look at some of the people who were there um this year and um, but have you got a big enough brand following and that doesn't mean have I got 50,000 followers on, on Instagram, although it helps. Um, it's more about have you got a try? Have you got some experience? Have you already got some traction? So that might be if you're going after somebody like Whole Foods, you might only really need to have sold in two or three 
local delis but at least you can show that you've got the traction you've got some people buying your products you might have a good um, direct consumer following you might have a good instagram or um facebook or tiktok but it's just thinking whether you've got enough behind you so that when you land your brand will do something um and it will sell to the extent that someone's looking for. And obviously we've got quite a broad breadth here of, from someone like Morrison's who, yes, they are looking for smaller local suppliers, but at the end of the day, that's pretty mass market right down to the small babies like the, the QCOMs, which is a bit of an unknown quantity. So that's that's gonna be quite interesting. We'll come and talk about that. Do you comply with, your, with their requirements? Um, Pretty much all of them except Selfridges on, on the um, bread and jam are looking for salsa or BRC. Um, my advice for what it's worth is don't worry too much about it at this stage. If you're miles off, if you, if you know that in the next year there's no way you're going to get salsa or you're going to have a manufacturer with salsa, then honestly there's no point applying to to some of these guys but on the other hand you're raising the profile and you're saying well actually in six months time we will have salsa or you find a solution so just think it through um don't lie there's no point lying um but you there is room on the form to to make make a note so just think think about it and then the other thing which is a no-brainer planet organic and whole foods it's clear on the website what their standards are. If you've got an ingredient in your product that Whole Foods don't like, they ain't going to change it for you. So there's no point. Cross them off your list. Um, so, so those are my sort of thought processes. I, I realise that the comment around salt is a bit waffly, but um, I think there's there's some, some sort of leverage there. Um, do you comply with UK labelling regulations and have barcodes? I think most of you who are on this call do, but it's just making sure you've got it. If you haven't, as you're probably aware, Bread and Jam have got a deal with GS1, so you can get hold of barcodes relatively cheaply. So that's straightforward. The next two are not so straightforward. Um, so do you know your numbers? Um, again, if you've listened to anything I do, you know that, that this is so key for me. Um, and one of the things that sort of, did it shock me yesterday? Sophie from Planet Organic was on the Monday Motivation and she was saying she's looking for 60% margin once you combine her margin with the wholesaler margin. Um, and that's a bit of a chunk, especially if you're used to doing direct to consumer and then someone's going to take a big bite out of your, of your delivery charge. Um, so certainly have a think about um what your margins are what your costs are make sure you cost it properly i'm not going to get into it in a super load of detail um, at the end of this i'm going to tell you about my pitch perfect course which i'm sure a lot of you are aware of we're relaunching it um in a couple of well we're, we're opening up the enrollment now but we're relaunching it in a couple of weeks and we'll go through numbers in a lot more detail but just make sure for the application, you don't need commercials. I don't think anyone's asking for commercials, but you will obviously need to have something at the pitch. So it's just getting that in the back of your mind. And then the final one, have you got enough cash? Um, different folks, different strokes. Some guys are settling really early um, and some guys are taking a long time. Wholesalers actually can take up to 90 days to settle. So basically what that means is if you've sold a load of product um, you're not, and you've paid a manufacturer to do it or you've bought all your own materials and you've paid, got to pay your staff, you're not going to get paid back for three months. So you need to do a little bit of thought process of have you got enough money just for the cash flow, but then also for the marketing investment. Um, and again, it varies with the with the different retailers. And if, again, you've got questions um, towards the end, then we can have a have a look at any specifics that you're particularly interested in. So are you retailer ready? I'm guessing pretty much everyone on here who I know Um is is ready um but just just think about um because also it'll be good background for for answering the questions so just a little bit about the um the logistics of it 
So applications opened on the 13th of September. Um, the closing date is the 11th of October. Bread and Jam are saying first come, first served. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I would have thought if I was a buyer, I would wait for all the applications to come in and I would then spend the time having a look at it. Um, I think it does no harm to get it done and dusted. And obviously, I know a lot of you have been waiting for today. So once you've <clears throat> gone through today, then, you know, get the applications in and then you know that it's done. Um, the winning pitches will be confirmed on the 15th of October, probably. And I want to manage your expectations on this because last year, a couple of retailers were late. I know one retailer is going to be late and I can't remember which one it is. Um, and if anyone knows, please, please shout up because I know Jason was talking about it the other day. Harrod. Uh, say again? Harrod. Ah, OK, cool. Um, and then you will get um, an email to say if you were successful and then what we're doing with the successful people. And actually, I haven't put it on there on the 18th of October, although I don't think we've got time, through the Bread and Jam guys, I will be doing a workshop on how to put the pitch together. Um, and we'll be going through slide by slide, the kind of thing that you should be putting in. Um, but don't worry, because that kind of sounds like everyone's going to have an identical pitch. It won't be like that, but it's just giving you some, some themes. So that's coming up. Um, as I say, as you may be aware, I'm sponsoring the retail pitching this year. So um, I'll be doing that workshop and then the actual physical pitching will be the 25th and 26th so we're not going to worry about that today we just want we want to get to the pitch so one step at a time um, so I have and I will put it in the chat at the end once we finish this um, I've actually downloaded all the forms because I have obviously nothing else to do with my life um, and I've done it actually because I'm I am um doing a couple of people's pitch applications for them and so I've downloaded the all the forms and put it on one word document um, and then just deleted the ones that I don't want to apply for and then I've got the form the reason um, well there's lots of reasons just to make your life easier I've done it but also last year I did a couple of people's applications and I thought that they would send me a copy and they didn't and then of course I didn't have either one had a, a no record of it and two um, I had no details of what I'd actually written so um, I'm sure you're all much more organized than I am but um, I think it's useful to have a document um, with it filled in before and you can amend it and think about it and reflect but the basics that we're going to focus on today are what's the description of the brand what's your product usp what product category do you fit into products and brand details that's pretty standard why is your brand beneficial to us and any other comments and if you have a look at the questions i'm sure you've already had a look at them they're they're all variations on that theme um so this is who i think is current i know they're adding people so this was current a couple of days ago if anyone else has come on then do remind me um planet organic and whole foods very traditional love small challenger brands perfect for for a lot of you who are on this call today um planet organic as i say were talking yesterday um, and some of the things that you might want to make notes of are um, do your research and I think this is really key for all of these applications there is such a temptation and I wrote a whole set over the weekend for somebody to cut and paste and it's okay to cut and paste but you do need to personalize them as well so um think about each of the retailers if you get a chance obviously as you know i'm in south france so i haven't been able to go and visit all these stores but if you are targeting somebody like planet organic they've got a new store open and i can't remember where it is but if you go on your website i'm sure you'll find it so that's exciting they're very excited about that um go and visit the stores please i cannot stress that enough because that will give you a much better idea of what to say so do your research, um, think about what you're going to invest. They're interested in what you're going to do for promotions and marketing. Sales and profit are important, but super important. And then the other thing to be clear on, and this was useful information because I have to be honest, I didn't know this. 
Um, the distributors they like working with are Whole Good, Borough Box, Tree of Life, and CLF. Um, and they won't take anything direct, as far as I'm aware. And that's what she said. Now, um, if one of you is all dealing with them at the moment and go, actually, that's not true, then, then please shout up. But that's that's what they're saying. So that's them. Cotswold Fair. Um, Steve, you've put your hand up. Please speak. Can you speak? I bet you can't speak, can you? We've had trouble with you speaking before. Uh, and Alexis, stick, stick your questions in the chat. I can see them. Oh, I'll ask a question on um, Whole Goods because I, I met them at lunch and they yeah. they said they won't talk to you until you come with the retailer. Yeah, there's two problems with Whole Goods. That's one. And then the other problem is the fact that they're full. Um, and so they are at capacity at the moment. They've got a new warehouse opening in about six weeks time um, because I'm trying to get um, one of my clients in there and they're chilled and that won't happen probably till the new year. Um, can I run through those wholesalers again? Yes. Uh, Whole Good, Borough Box, Tree of Life and CLF. Um, and it is wholesalers is a chicken and egg. And, you know, I've, I've actually written a piece about wholesalers on my uh, website. So if you go to the Karen Green dot com, there is a there's a whole piece on wholesalers because um, I thought it was quite interesting. It's not an area I, if I'm honest, I understand particularly well. But this whole am I listed in a wholesaler? No, because you need to get the retailer listing again it's a bit like the salsa i think there's no harm in having a little um what's the word degree of 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 lying <laughs> i can't think of the right word but yeah um so if you say to, to planet organic yeah we're working uh we're thinking of working with whole good or we're thinking of working with borough box um then that makes life easier the only other thing i would say is if she's saying 60 percent margin between the two that's quite a chunk um and all of those are quite different in terms of their terms and conditions and complexity. So um, anyway, let's not get too bogged down in that. I've got two more participants raising hands. Um, I can't see who's raising hands. So the easiest thing for me, if you wouldn't mind, is put it in the chat because I've got three people. OK, David, I can see you raising your hands. Yeah, um, mine was just a question on, so this 60% margin, is that generally always a 50-50 a split between the, the wholesaler and the retailer? Or um, genu Generally, the re you know, you start with the retail margin, and this is something, I've got some spreadsheets that, that I share in the Pitch Perfect course, which calculates it. So you take a retail, say it's a fiver, they're going to be looking for 40%. So you're down to three pounds. The wholesaler says, well, I'd like 20%. So you take 20% off again. And that's the money. That's basically the money that you get. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Okie dokie. Um, I can't see anybody else with their hands up. Alexa, you've put your hand back down. Okay, cool. Let's continue. Right, Cotswold Fair. Um, in terms of entry-level wholesalers, the likes of CLF, Tree of Life borrow box is slightly different because it's a um, the more of a, a fulfillment company um, are what I call your entry level. Cotswold Fair are the next level up. So they're very much about fine foods um, and fine food delis. And if that's your bag, um, I would certainly go go on the website, have a look at them and get some ideas about um, what you think they're looking for. Um, Nice, really, really nice business to deal with. Um, but you, you're going to have to think about the investment. So you're going to have to invest in sampling and, and sampling at the initial stage as well, because they do these lovely bags of products to sell out, send out to retailers to get them to trial it. And then sampling in store, training in store. There's lots of things you can spend money on with Cotswold Fair, but they are nice guys. OK, then we get into what I call the mainstream. So Morrison's booths. Selfridges and Holland and Barrett. Um, Selfridges, key things to say about them. They are, um, they look like they're looking for deli products at the moment, health and vegan. Um, 
they are interested in first to market. So they don't want exclusivity, but they do want they'd like to be first retailer on your list. So they're open to seeing you early on. They're open for you not to have salsa. So if you're at that early stage, they could well be your your people. Um, And again, really nice to deal with. They're not particularly into highly evolved presentations. They just want to see the product, see really get to to grips with it. Um, Who should we talk about next? Morrison's. Um, working towards salsa. So that's great for those of you who are um, interested in that. I did some work for them about two years, it might even be three years ago now, um, in London, recruiting people for their um, meet the manufacturer, meet the maker project. About half of the applicants were eliminated on price. So if you are a high cost premium product, you might not be right for Morrison's. So again, go and have a look at Morrison's store, see what they're selling, and then get an idea of um, whether they're going to be a good fit for you. Um, Holland and Barrett, lots of online. A lot of people um, are listed with them. They are expensive to deal with in terms of the margins that they look with and for. And I've got several clients who just walked away um if you've got a highly profitable product then you can probably offer them the margins that they're looking for but they will want their piece of flesh on marketing as well so um for some of you Holland and Barrett is a perfect fit and for others it might just be a step too far money wise um booths um waitress of the north um they are sending um They are sending eight buyers to this. Well, obviously not physically sending, but there will be eight booths buyers. They are taking this bread and jam very seriously, which is probably why there's a massive long list of things there. Um, I've always thought they're nice to deal with. And then I saw somebody at lunch who said they were very difficult. So I don't know. I haven't personally dealt well. I haven't personally dealt with them because I've been turned down every time I've applied to them for various clients. So we will see. Um, okie dokie, let's move on. And then we've got the new boys, the QCOMs, that we will get you your food in 10 minutes, under 30 minutes, whatever. Um, these are small. Um, they are looking for, well, certainly gorillas are looking for salsa, DJ don't seem to have specified. Um, I think I would go on the website and have a look at it and just see where you whether you feel you fit in it. Um, certainly, I mean, I've just applied to Deja for one client because she's doing snacking um, and another one for baked goods, for gorillas. So have a look at the list, have a go. It's an unknown. It could be an amazing opportunity to get in on the ground level and grow with them, or it could be very difficult but they are completely unknown so it'll be really interesting to see what happens but um it would do no harm to apply to them gorillas sorry i i shop with gorillas quite a bit this is what i thought and they have a local london category right and i've discovered a lot of really cool products that way that aren't even available in the grocery stores or in in the local deli sometimes so it could okay. be a really cool opportunity so, so it's a good one. And it may well be a really good one to, to collaborate with from a marketing point of view as well, if it is if it is a local, um, sort of more local thing. David, you got another question? No, you just put your No, phone. sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Not sure what happened there. <laughs> no bother. Um, okay, so getting ready to apply. Um, as I say, we've got this um, downloadable form. Yugita, do you want to ask a question? Nope. Okay, no worries. Um, so I will I will send send this form out to you with the recording. Um, and yes, uh, Alexa, I do agree it would be good if Bread and Jam actually downloaded it. But anyway, um, so get the form. Oh, no, they don't. They 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 have an option in the form that I'll, I'll talk to you about later because it's oh, something okay. that they so could do on their end. It's quite easy for them to do. It's just ticking a button. 
Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so decide who you're going to pitch to and then delete the rest so that that just clears your head. And you'll find with the questions I've put in the bit as well so that you can read that um, summary that Planet Bread and Jam have given. But don't just rely on that. Go and do your own research as well. Um, and then, yeah, it's really simple. Draft responses, stick them on the form and then upload it onto the website. And fingers crossed, simples. Okay, it's probably not that simple. So what should we do? Um, so I've picked out some of the questions just to have a little think. Um, and last year, for example, I did some work with Hot Tea Mama, who's, who's just won some award, Nourish, I think, this week. Um, and we were really like, what category are you in? And I think a lot of people just think this isn't really very important, but it's actually really key. Um, and the first thing that I would do and what, what I've been doing with clients is, is you pick. So let's use a cardo because a cardo is so simple because it's all there. So you go on a cardo and if we use this example of, of hot tea mama. So this is a tea that's aimed at women who are pregnant, um, having given birth and menopausal. And one of the questions that we had when we were putting it together last year was what is it? Um, is it a tea? Is it a vitamin and mineral supplement or actually should it sit with baby? Because the people who are buying it will be in the baby section and categories just vary by retailer. So if we carry on with with Hot Tea Mama's example, all of these four will have it would have it in a different place. So John, John Bell and Croydon, which is a great pharmacy in London, which are obviously not part of the bread and jam piece, but um, they would probably have it in their own area or because they've got a lot of specialist products. Holland and Barrett, I think, have therapeutic teas. Boots, still not sure where we, I think where we ended up thinking about baby for boots. Sainsbury's actually have therapeutic teas and vitamin and supplements. So the category is really, really key. And it will determine which buyer you, you talk to. Um, so Jamie's, James is asking, um, an English wine spritzer in a can, do I go for the wine category or do I go for ready to drink? Drinks are really hard because in the big retailers, so, you know, Tesco, Sainsbury's, et cetera, you've either got front of store, where, which sits with the food to go, or you've got back of store. The fruit to go has a higher footfall, but it's also really hard to get onto. So if you're at that beginning stage, then probably going for the wine category is a, is a better area to be in. But it's a good question. And what you have to think about, and I think I've taken it out of this presentation, but think about your customer journey. So when is your customer going to be buying your most likely to be buying your product? So are they going to. And also, is it an impulse? So if you go to the food to go category, you're thinking, oh, I want something for lunch, grab a sandwich or something on the way home, grab a glass, a spritzer. Or are you going to go to the back of store because you're buying wine for the evening? So it depends on the customer journey, I think, to some extent. And also where, where your competitors sit as well. Um, and then there is the opportunity, of course, of dual facing. So if you look at something like Coca-Cola, um, it's in the chiller and there's probably another chiller somewhere which they'll have paid for and it will be in back of store. And this was an example of where Simply Cook managed to do a deal with Sainsbury's and they were actually in three. They managed to merchandise in three different places. It's probably two or three years ago now and they're now in Tesco's. But they were in the, the vegetables aisle, they were in the meat aisle, and they were in where the rest of their brothers and sisters were in the, in the um, cooking ingredients. Um, I don't think, and, and please, you know, shout up and object if you, that any of us have got the money to do that kind of thing. So we've, we've got to pick, pick one. Um, and that's going to be critical on this application because the buyer there are more than one buyer for a lot of retailers coming. So you need to make sure you've got the right buyer, mm -hmm. which means you've got to get the right category. Okay. Yogita, have you put your hand up again or? 
No. OK, cool. OK, so that's the category. So it doesn't you know, when you look at that, it looks really easy to do, but it's it needs more thought. And and also make sure you use their language, because if you go and have a look and again, I've been doing some research on this. They always they all use different language, um, but most of them are online, fortunately. OK, so the description of the product and the USP. So. Product and brand. If, if you go away with nothing else today, think about the differentiation between product and brand. So the product is the stuff you make and the brand is what wraps around it. And I think the biggest mistake I've seen people make when they do pitches, and I've watched an awful lot of them now over the years, is they focus on the product, not the brand. But on this account, this piece is the product and the unique selling point of your product. And I'm suspecting most of you here would be really good at it. I think that's the, the area you're gonna be really great at. So what we what we put together, this was um, application we did last year um, for Case Wars, which is above all sausage. So we were kind of going, look, it's, it's premium, it's a meat feast. We were talking about the fact that it's beef, pork and lamb. It's South African. <clears throat> and then we got into the real detail of what it is. So, you know, South African sausage, there's the ingredients and then a bit of branding. It's if I was going to criticize that looking at it now, I would say we're probably not being as explicit as we should be on the USP. Um, one of the things that was quite interesting debate yesterday, um, because on this call there was Planet Organic, Milk and More, and um, Scott from Fort Miller Mason. And they were discussing, should you say, or should, basically should you slag everyone else off? And of course, that's really not very British to do. So, so it's you should think about your USP in terms of we are the only one who, or we have a point of difference. So you're implying that you're better than your competitors, but you're not actually being explicit about it. And then, as I say, brand is a different ball game. Um, and thinking about why is your brand beneficial for us? So that is a question that several of them are using. So this answer here, is generic. So Case Wars, number one brand of Boavos in the UK, driving profitable sales value to premium sausage market. Our mission is um, our grow, tribe of followers is growing and our brand has been featured here. So you've got all the elements of the brand, but what's not there is why is it relevant to the applicant? So why is it relevant to Morrison's or um, Booth's? What is it that that brings the two together. So the key points that I, and I will share this presentation as well afterwards, so you don't have to take, well, you can take screenshots if you want, but the things that I would think about are, what does your brand st stand for? Who are the target customers? And what is the fit with the retailer? If you, if you can um, identify that. What have you achieved so far? That seems to be working really well in, in successful presentations I've seen recently. Um, what is the marketing? So what marketing are you doing at the moment? And then the bonus is tailor that to the retailer. So for example, Selfridges are very into their Project Earth. So how can you tie Project Earth into your answers? And even put, you know, something like, our tribe of, uh, we already have a load of Morrison customers as you know, on, on our direct to um, consumer sales, for example. And we did, we have done that with a couple of, of retailers and it's worked really well to just weave that in um, that you, you're already talking to their people and you can bring more people like that. And then I just, I've just put this in, um, to, to help you think about what makes a brand beneficial. Um, this is Seth Godin, which I'm a really massive fan of. Go and read some of his books about marketing because what he's kind of getting to the essence is reinforcing the fact that your brand is not your logo. Your brand is not your product. Your brand is the whole set of 
experiences, stories, things you've heard, things you've read, things you've seen um, that the consumer is willing to pay a premium for. And the best example, which I use all the time, is Coca-Cola, because we will pay one ninety five if you even buy it, but you know the punter will pay one ninety five for a five hundred ml bottle of cola with the Coke name on it. If it's a five hundred ml Asda cola, they'd probably not pay more than fifty p, and that's what you're bringing to the party. So you're bringing new people, you're bringing margin, you're bringing category growth. There's a whole list of things that you can be bringing to that retailer, but it has to be tailored. And that's, to me, the the critical piece. Be clear on your product USPs and your brand USPs and why that's relevant to those particular retailers. So um, I know I've said it already, but do your research, go and look at the stores and also update as well, because of course we're now post pandemic. So prior to COVID, Planet Organic, for example, were very focused on snacking, food to go, the student population, the tourist population. Now they're very focused on local. Um, And that's completely changed. When I spoke to Sophie, gosh, probably six months ago, she said the things that are selling, and it's probably changed again since, were things like bakery. So their bakery section was going shed loads, whereas a year and a half ago, or two years ago, it would have been um, snacking. So it's it's doing that piece of research there's loads of stuff on the internet there's supply um supplier websites for most of the guys who've got who will give you more clues as well um and i think somewhere certainly in the course um but somewhere i've got a list of all the um all the supplier webs sorry the retailer websites that are designed for suppliers it's complicated to say so i know i'm laboring this point but it's it's so key um, to get to get it across. It's the brand, not your product. So where the word brand is in the in the title, write about your brand, and where it's the product, write about your products, and then think about what are their values and requirements. What's in the store at the moment? I've done some work with a couple of people um, recently and they built these gap analysis and I looked at it and I said, do they actually list that product? And they went, oh, no, 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 but it's in the marketplace. So I said, well, I think it's better to show what's there rather than what could be there. Otherwise, you're going to be there all day. Um, obviously, you're not going to build a gap analysis for the application but it's a good piece of discipline um, to do it anyway because you'll probably want it for the pitch Um, and so think about basically you want to be in the top right quadrant therefore what is it about your brand what is your usps that the punter is going to pay for that the retailer is interested in that puts you in that top right quadrant Um, okay thanks james Sorry, I've just seen you're you're off. Listen to the recording. Um, And then use any facts and statistics, anything you can back it up. Helen, you've got a question. Yeah, um, you mentioned that we need to be in the top right hand portion of the the chart. My product, I don't believe is, it's not a low, low level product, but I don't believe that that is what makes it different. I don't want it to be in the high, high price category. It's a snacking product that if it went in it's a grab and go product so if i put it in at high price yep. surely that's not where i need it to be no. okay let me let me re-explain the gap then so the the first thing you need to think about is the axes so this is probably not the right. best okay. example that i've cut and pasted because this is as you say price versus quality for you i mean if you take fit bakes which is obviously in your arena we must have done i think we did hello three, hello we Hi, did i am here we did three different um gap analysis until we were happy that it made sense so you can put anything you like on those axes so oh, if you okay no i'm with you now i was I, I, I was wrongly assuming that we had to follow those axes no, i've no, done no. it i've done it on completely different axes uh, for my yeah. product so now I'm fine. Absolutely. I'm, you know, okay you've got 
I don't know whether you've got one of your five a day, but you've got a load of veg in yours. Yeah. So yeah. You might have load of veg, no veg, mm-hmm. um, and then plot it against yummy chocolate, no yummy chocolate. Yeah. For example, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit facetious, but, and, and Helen makes, well, what do you make, Helen? Because I don't want to <laughs> ill-define rootle. Uh, I was basically, it's a biscuit that contains over 35% vegetable. There you go. So that's so. Look, there's there's your there's that that's what I would do with those, um, and and that's something that um, we'll go into in a bit more detail at the at the workshop. Um, and then don't be afraid to use facts and statistics. So um, you know, if you have got a decent, I know there's people here who've got you know ten thousand followers on Insta. That's a really interesting fact. So get it in there. You know, we've got engaged people. We've got 2,000 on our list. We've Because what they're interested in is if we take your brand, because we're going to have to take something off, are you going to sell? And the only way they're going to know that you're going to sell is that you can establish you've already got traction. Um, and if you haven't got sales, and I know there's a couple of people here who are still at those very baby stages, there's still things that you can put in to say what you're going to do in terms of, or even your targets. We're targeting to get 5,000, you know, Instagram followers, or we've got a, a load of influencers in coming on stream or something. Obviously, it doesn't need to be pages and pages and pages long. Um, and actually, I, um, let's just address that now. How long does an application need to be? I asked Jason this question a couple of weeks ago on a call and um, he didn't know the answer. And those of you who've worked with me or done the course will know I'm really into profiling um, buyers. And if they're a real detailed person, I can guarantee you what you write on this form won't be enough. And if they're not detailed and they're very dum 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 very quick, then you're probably going to write too much. So um put enough in and and what is enough i honestly two two paragraphs probably um two or three depends what you've got to say um and then the other critical one most of these forms have this year the nebulous any other comments this is your opportunity to shine this is your opportunity to say something interesting um and i've just cut um a picture obviously you can't put pictures on these forms but um this was an example of rebelicious this was a pitch we did for sainsbury's which was successful they've launched this weekend um something around how you're going to i think in here what's your vision for the brand in their stores so what are you going to do these guys haven't got super loads of money but they came up with some ideas about what they were going to do with the digital campaigns how they were going to work with influencers what they were going to do in the press what you're going to do to work with them i think is a really good place for this um this section i think that's what i would put in this section um there will be exceptions to the rule but Please fill it in. If someone's asking for any other comments, don't ignore it. It's an opportunity for you to tell some, to do some more selling stuff. Um, Okie dokie, Steve. We're talking to similar outlets as yours. Should we say this if it is true? (laughs) Only if you're you're doing a Cedars Rose, which I'm doing at the moment, and then you have to provide evidence if Adam's still in the room. (laughs) 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 Anyway, um, I, I don't think you should ever blatantly lie because it's difficult to, to keep lies going on. But I do think there's nothing wrong with embellishing the truth or having a vision. Um, so having, having a vision of where you want to go might be, you know, we, we intend to be in the bigger retailers in, in a year to 18 months time that's fine or if you can talk about rates of sale that you've already achieved that's fine you can embellish it i mean we had um ice when i was working with ice kitchen we actually um, um, we actually had it written from a wholesaler who said you know where you're stocked against magnum in two different fridges ice kitchen outsells it well that is a beautiful thing for us to to talk about and we could back it up but um you know selling is being creative <laughs> um but don't 
And also be aware these guys talk to each other. They talk to each other more than you think. So if you say, well, I'm, I'm a long way down the line with Whole, Whole Foods and, and Sophie from Planet Organics had a quick chat with the guys there and they're like, no, that's, that's just something to be thinking about. Okay, so last section. How are we doing for time? Probably a little bit tight. That's fine. Um, some of you will be aware I have a, a short course called The Secret Source of Getting a Listing. Um, this is not a plug for that. This is a plug for, um, again, something Planet Organic said yesterday, which you know came after I'd written this presentation, actually, but it's really important. They are far more like people are far more likely to buy or have an action to buy if they've already seen you <clears throat> and generally it takes a person seven times to see a brand before they take any action and taking action means taking action it doesn't actually mean buying it so what i would suggest in the next two three weeks how many weeks we've got two weeks is get out there and start promoting your product. And I'm not, you know, we don't have time to do this. You're welcome to have, get hold of the course. It's it's there, 47 euros. I'll stick a link in the um, email that I send out afterwards. But what I go through is the seven things that you need to think about for raising the profile of your brand so that these guys have seen it by the time they get to read your application, assuming they all read them on the, <clears throat> on the 15th. So, for example, LinkedIn, I know I bang on about LinkedIn a lot, but, you know, is your LinkedIn profile up to date? Is your brand up to date? Um, have you have you just done lunch or speciality? Are you about to go to the North um, Fine Food North? Promote that. You know, that will raise profile. See if you can get the, if you are going to find Food North, get those boys to send out an article about you. Get some coverage from that. A lot of awards coming out at the moment. So Quality Food Awards shortlists came out yesterday. Um, there were a few small brands, but I don't think anyone who's on here. Nourish, a lot of you, I think, got Nourish Awards. Um, and Great Taste, of course, has just come out as well beautiful press opportunities come on people let's get out there now include them obviously in your application but also start putting them out there so people can see um social media obviously um in terms of your facebook and your insta think about the hashtags as well again um sophie was talking about how to, and i've heard her say this before um Vegan London. If you are vegan and you're based in London, use that hashtag. She looks for it. Um, and that's a useful top tip. Um, and then referrals. That's the, the, the seventh one um, on that list. It's difficult to do. But again, not banging on too much about LinkedIn. If you, for example, um, are linked into a lot of people the likelihood is i've got like five thousand linkedin um connections i'm not connected to all the buyers i keep trying to link in with sophie actually and she never says yes so <laughs> i'm not linked in with her um but there's quite a few so if there's someone who maybe i know and it's worth going oh can you intro me to somebody um or you know you you're if you're part of bread and jam you're probably well networked already who do you know who might know one of these buyers is it possible for them just to put a word in somehow? I don't know. That's why we go to the networking events to meet more people physically or in person. Um, so I just wanted to say, don't just think about the application cold. Think about your, your, your pre-marketing and your post-marketing as well. Because if on the 15th you get a slot, do you know what? I would ramp up my marketing. I would be really thinking, how can I raise profile of my brand and me so that when the buyer sees me on the 25th, 26th, they know who I am, what I do, and they're already sold. You know, it's 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 like the film of the cruise. You have me at hello. That's what you want to be. That's the dream. OK, so quick, quick two minute pitch. Um, 
for the course. So as I did allude to, we are running Picture Perfect. This will be the fourth cohort. Um, what is it? Um, it's, let's move the chat out of the way. It's designed to help you do your own selling or make sure that you know when, if you're going to take a salesperson on what they should be doing. So it should definitely save you money. Um, you know, if you're looking at retaining someone, it's going to be two, three grand a month, um, which is a lot less than employing someone for 50, 60,000 to do your sales for you. And this is at the, this is more second stage. Um, it'll help you <clears throat> to do a better, to make a better deal. It will help you to, sorry, get a deal and make a better deal. So I've, there's a whole tranche on negotiation in there. <clears throat> All the buyers you are working with have been trained. And um, thank you, Alexa. I'll see you again. Thank you, Beth. Hello and goodbye. Um, so you need to be too. Um, and, and that's why I put this course on and we run it. In fact, the last one we ran was after Brendan Jam last year. Um, and it's to help you grow your business exponentially because it will enable you to go out and sell more effectively. So very quick, what's, what's in it? We get into much more detail. Obviously, we talked about bread and jam, which is great. But um, if you don't get a pitch, and this is what obviously we're going to talk about, if you get the letter going, sorry, you haven't had, you're not going to do a pitch, what do you do next? And this will help you to work out what to do next. So how to find the actual physical buyer, how to find the right retailer, how to get the meeting. We go through how to write emails, how to contact them, how to do that seven um, touches of them before you even start. Um, how to prepare for the meeting, how to put the pitch together, um, how to become a negotiating pro and how to um, how to actually do the launch and to keep the listing. Because I think we're all guilty of going, I need to get more business, need to get more business. Oh, I've got a listing now, I'm going to move on to something else. Um, and we talk about that. So that's the six modules. So there are um, oops, six training videos, loads and loads of downloadable templates. So, you know, I've been doing this five years, everything that I've acquired, all the margin templates, email writing, negotiation planners, meeting planners, perfect pitch, they're all in the course. We're going to do a group coaching call once a week where you can um, come on and have a hot seat, discuss any issues you've got. And then we've also got the Facebook group with the other Pitch Perfect alumni, which goes back two or three years. So there's a lot to be had. Um, Carolina was, I don't know whether Carolina's on actually, she did sign up. Um, she started at the beginning of last year. Um, she was on the course in November, got the pitch sorted, spoke to Selfridges um, and got the listing in March this year, which is a pretty good turnaround, actually. When I was saying, you know, three years, it, she was there in four months. Um, so what's the investment? It's 497 um, and the link is there, but obviously I will send you a link later. And we have a code from Bread and Jam, which saves you £100. So it will be 397 And just for today, we're going to throw in the secret source of getting a retailer listing as well. So you get all that together. OK, so you can apply now. There's, there's the link again, foodmentor.co.uk forward slash pitch perfect. So questions. Who has any questions for me? I know that was very whistle stop. Uh, two, okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see you all. Right, who's got their hand up? Helen, have you got your hand up again or is it just? No, I don't think it's, sorry. I don't think it's, I haven't taken it down. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, Monique. Monique, Monique, Monique. Okay. Monique, you've got your hand up. Oh, would you like to speak? That might help. Monique? Yes. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay, you, cool. Let me unmute the others as well. 
Yeah, um, I have a question that's uh, going back to the beginning a little bit, and sorry if this is a bit basic for everyone else, no but um, we bought GTIN barcodes and we've had a retailer say, um, this isn't compatible, you need a barcode. If you're in France, for example, the barcode should start with this particular number, okay. um, which doesn't. Do you know the difference between GTIN and because you mentioned um G something one. Speak to the boys at GS1. Okay. Because they are global experts. So yes, they're working in the UK. But if you if you ring up there and I go on their website and they'll have yeah. a hotline number, they're super, super helpful. They are, I think they're a charity um or they're a non-profit organization. So they're they're there to help you. They're not there okay, to amazing. charge you money. So get cool. on them because honestly barcodes is not my area of expertise cool okay thanks very much they don't scam. okay cool who else have we got putting their hand up yvonne have you got a question or is your hand just up i was just wondering kind of if i could just stay on after just to um speak with you because i'm yeah. on the mentoring program is that okay just to... yeah no worries Brilliant. um who else have we got yugita Hi, Karen. Um, quick Hi. question, and I, I do intend to do something that's uh, around with you separately, but um, I see that a lot of these brands who are pitching, most of them seem to be, in fact, all of them seem to be on trend, the latest and greatest in terms of world's leading. Mm -hmm. My products are kind of, um, there's a huge, I mean, demand for it, but we're quite traditional. We're not uh, you know, um, CBD products, for instance, <laughs> we're not the most trendy products. Do you mm -hmm. think buyers coming to Bread and Jam will pass us to people who are more traditional products with broader appeal? I, I think you have to look at And everyone mute who's, who's not talking, I don't know who it is. Um, she has no name, Charlie. Right, I'm going to try mute people who are making noise. Okay, that's better. Um, so, I guess it's looking at your product and seeing where the fit is. So, you might not be trendy. Uh, you know, Boavos are not trendy. Boavos are made from 92%. No, that's yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. So, so think about what's what's your, your yeah your your unique proposition, and I'm sure there is one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Phil, do you have a Philip? Do you have a question? Yeah, just a very quick one. Um, is there so on the blues buying panel? There seems it seems to be sending a lot of them. Is there um, anywhere on the bread and jam pitch deck of, of which departments they're coming from? If, there, if there's <laughs> relevance, or is it uh, or is it hush secret? No, there's nothing as useful as that. It's not, I, I mean, this is one of the great things about Product Guru, if I doubt mention comp other competitors are available. Product Guru, for kind of 48 hours before you get to know who, you who the buyers are, so you can profile them and it's much better. With this, you have no idea who you're pitching to. And, you know, back in 2018, when we did it with, with D, um, I don't think either of the buyers were the right buyers. Okay, because um, that's obviously that's, that's a lot to consider there because it's it's a very tight time frame between uh, you know should be should any of us be successful and 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 then going straight into it. I mean, you know, not talking about profiling, it's I'd say fifty percent of the value we had in our in our last pitch was the fact that we probably need inside leg measurement of our buyer. You know that uh, uh, it, it was so valuable for rapport building as well as as well as saying what we had to offer them. But it's um, yeah tricky if we don't know who they are. But yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's it is a it is a difficulty, and I think it's more um, because the buyers are just you know they might send different buyers on different days. I think you just have to trust the process, and if they see something that's amazing, then they're going to pass it on, and that's that's their job. Um, okay, so, great, thank you. Um, Steve has put a question in the chat saying Jason's not on this, um, but. Can the application form have a product photo? Now, last year, there were, you could have three photos. And this year, no photos. Um, so, no, you can't have photos this year, um, which is a shame because last year I was teaching people what to put on their photos, but we don't have any this year. Um, 
you know, the wow factor is going to have to be when you're actually there. But I mean, your wow factor is you're shortlisted for um, quality food awards. Um, and yeah, you've got some pretty amazing products and you've got a lot of traction. I think you've got enough to say. Um, the only problem is, is probably, yeah, I get it. It's a shame. Um, the only problem is understanding what your products are, I suspect. Um, so that will take some some descriptive writing. Um, OK, has anyone else got any questions? I'm assuming Yogita and Yvonne don't have any more questions, but your hands are still up. Oh, sorry. That's all right, don't worry. And then Jess, one last question from you. What do you think would be the best category for frozen kids meals? Baby and toddler or frozen ready meals? Um, it depends on the retailer. So if you go and have a look at Ocado, um, it's probably frozen baby and toddler. If it's Morrison's, it's going to be frozen ready meals, I think, because what you have to think about is, is the space. So what space do you need? So most of baby and toddler, unless you're planning um, to put a freezer into the, into the um, ambient aisle, which is probably not going to work, although it has worked in COVID with child. Um, the likelihood it's going to be frozen and therefore it's going to sit with frozen um, ready meals. So frozen ready meals for children. That would be my approach, I think. Does that help? Um, okay, who else have we got? Anybody else got any questions? Um, Valerie, Valerie, Valerie. Have I got, can you speak, Valerie? Your hand is up. Where are you? There we go. Yeah, you are. Valerie, do you have a question? No? No. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions or is that about it? Okay, perfect. So what I will do is I will send you the link to the course, the link to the mini course, the link to the form, and obviously a recording of this. And then if you've got any questions, just ping me an email. And I hope that was really useful. And um, yes, Yvonne, feel free to stay on the call. And yes, thank you, Helen. Good luck to everybody. Um, there's, there are lots of buyers coming, so you, you've got a really good chance. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody.